Hi, today I have the Yasmin Le Bon in the studio. And I've always loved her way back um, when I was at school and I used to see her in magazines and Vogue and I just had the biggest girl crush on her. I've always thought she was the most incredibly beautiful woman. Later on when I became a makeup artist and I did my first job with her, I was so bowled over by her. I mean, she's just such an interesting person. She has amazing stories. She's got so much wisdom. And gradually over these years, I've worked with her again and again and again and got to know her so much better. And I just wanted to share her with you. I wanted you to experience the Yasminness of it, just how, what an incredible woman she is. So I thought I'd do two looks on her today. I'm going to start with a kind of natural look, thinking about, you know, those early supermodel days and how those girls used to do their makeup. And just, I just wanted you to hear all, all of her stories, really. And then I'm going to do a stronger makeup look on her as well. So let's start with the more natural look. And here's Yasmin. So I'm going to start by using some Ember Elise just as a light layer of moisture. And Yasmin, your skin is incredible. It hasn't actually changed since the first time I did your makeup, which is, <laughs> let's say, a few years ago. <laughs> just a few. Just a few. Yeah, well, it's got nothing I mean, to do with me. It's just his DNA. Really? Do you think it's but all I, genetic? I mean, I really don't deserve it at all. <laughs> I really don't. I've, I've, I've put it through some terrible things. I'm going to use this complexion rescue next because we're going to do this kind of... We Ooh, thought we'd I start with... You like this? I oh, like good. this. Yeah, this is nice and light. I'm going to use fingers to apply this. I might blend in with a brush, but I mean, I just... I love your skin so much, so I don't want to cover it. Um, I just want to enhance it and I love the, the colour of your skin. It's so beautiful. So I'm just going to really lightly blend this in. It's a bit blotchy my skin there. It's not really. Like you've got great skin. No I haven't. Really even tone. I don't think you've got blotchy skin. Yeah, mine's like a map of the world. <laughs> well, that's why we have makeup anyway. Bit of exactly. concealer here. Thank Bit goodness. Bit of concealer there. Wipes away. Love makeup. You really do love makeup. I That's do. the one thing I've noticed yeah. all the years I've worked with you. You are so into makeup, and as a makeup artist, that is such a pleasure. You know, you but really take an interest. It's lovely to in... see somebody really work. I mean, I I came from a generation where you had to know how to do your own makeup to be a model. I mean, oh. we used to do it at the shows, really? partly because we were doing so many shows that we had to run around and just running from one show to the other. And while they were doing the hair, we were whipping the last makeup off and then adjusting it. And I, So I how did you decide what it. the look was going to be then? Or there was, was a makeup there artist was where they didn't have look. time? There was always a look there. There was a picture. Oh, so you just copied a and picture. And so we'd look at the picture and go, right, yeah, OK, that eye, you know, a black line, no no, no, no lip, OK. <laughs> so we'd sit down and we'd have, we'd have a full thing of makeup. I and mean, we had to take wow. quite a lot of stuff with us everywhere. Oh, so you were quite your prolonged. own makeup artist, really. But, you know, when you work with people, I mean, it's just so lovely to just let people develop and do their thing mm. and see how they look at your face and the things you learn from them and just be really open to, to, to different things because yeah. I think we all get stuck oh, doing the same thing all the time. Yeah, so I'm just putting on some concealer now. This is the Laura Mercier Secret Camouflage. Just blending that in. See, I love that brush you used on my face. Oh, this one, yeah. Me too. Doesn't that feel good? It it's feels amazing. like it's sort of it's taking off half the makeup, which is what I like about it. See, that's the secret. I don't. I never really understood the brush thing. The buffing thing, yeah. Because if you put it on, sort of, uh, you sort of get it on, mm. and then I either use this one or I use a slightly bigger one, and I just go all over, and it just picks up because it's synthetic. It's picking up all the makeup. I'm just taking and That's blending That's the trick off. I'm missing. That's, <laughs> I've come here for tricks. Yeah, really I'm going to give you a big yeah. brush and you're going to practice over the next few weeks. I'm going to check in on you. I'm going to practice. I'm, I'm going to go home with homework. I've got homework to do. So I'm just going to put a little bit more around here and then any little pinpoints, so any little red marks or things, just using a Which tiny there brush. Are there are lots of, in my case. <laughs> <laughs> Look this way. Couple there, that's all. Yeah. Small brush. Just dotting on and blending those out. That's my shaving rash. <laughs> 
So I'm just going to cover a little bit of this pigmentation. You have. Oh yes, the wonderful cloasma. <laughs> It's amazing, you but, know, yeah. because it's moved to the outer edges of my face. So it started in the centre. It starts here, which of course is lovely. So you have a moustache. Like fake moustache, yeah. And then it moved up here. I had a. I had it on my forehead after yeah. George was born. Big yeah. piece. It's, it's like a. It's like a map. Yes. I had Africa on my forehead, <laughs> and and then and then actually I had a big one here as well. And then it's, it's now just moved out. I now have a little outline around my face. If I don't put really high SPF on every day, mine just comes back. It's like it, there's yeah. a memory of it. I do have to And I if I go on holiday, I can see it sun like, cream from years ago. Sun cream is really, ago. really important. It's so important. Yeah, it yeah. really is now, much more so than before. And in terms of covering it, I mean, it takes, it's a bit of trial and error. You will need to get more than one shade. I'm saying this because something like this is you know a big palette of sort of concealers because if it's too light it's ashy mm -hmm. if it's too dark it's obviously going to look you know not lighten it up so you need something which is a mixture of sort of your skin tone plus something which is a little bit pinker or a little bit more in your case a little bit more peachy and then you kind of just have to try different shades and when you get the right shade and you blend it in with fingers or a brush it will become completely seamless with the rest of the skin and if it's too white or too dark you will see it instantly so true that warm thing yeah it's warming okay. it up warming and brightening it up that's the trick and i'm just going to add some highlighter just onto your top of your fabulous cheekbones that's Blend nice stuff what do you this is, um, gosh, I always get this pronunciation incorrect because my Danish is terrible. It's Kia Wies, I think, ah. or Wiz, I think I've got that right. Um, and it's an organic, really nice organic natural brand that I've quite recently discovered. And I just think this is so, such a beautiful, seamless, great highlighter for every day that looks pretty much imperceivable on the skin, even in daylight, which I love. And then I'm just gonna give you a light powdering just around the center of your face. So this is just a translucent powder. I'm gonna use a small brush because I don't want you getting too powdery everywhere else. Because I like to keep your natural glow going. I concur. <laughs> I'm not sure how much of a natural glow I have, but I've got one now. I've got a Lisa Glow now. <laughs> so I'm going to use some of these matte nudes, which I think perfectly sum up that kind of 90s supermodel look, which, um, I mean, uh, when you... I remember that. <laughs> you remember this look, and you probably had your makeup done right by Kevin at some point as well. I'm sure you did. Oh, yeah. Kevin was amazing. He was, he was tell us such a him. lovely, lovely man, and... I don't know, you know, what it is, a warmth in those fingers, but he he could he could do that lived in, that wonderful kind of lived in look so easily. And he could build and build and build. He could put more and more makeup on you and it still wouldn't look too much. Amazing. It's incredible. What's one of your favourite sort of shoots from the beginning? With, with any photographers that you kind of worked with at the beginning that you were just like so blown away by i think i was really really lucky to to work with peter Lindbergh yeah, a, a lot back then you know and he always had a wonderful team you know julian would be doing the hair and oh, stefan marais would amazing. be doing the makeup and i remember being mm, not so chuffed <laughs> about doing this italian vogue shoot where stefan was going through one of his you know slightly experimental phases so there was no, oh, yeah. no makeup on at all just an oh, inch look. thick eyebrow okay, i remember those <laughs> you remember yes that? and i remember veronica webb and i looking at each other going you can really pull it off no no i can't put no you can no you can really <laughs> trying, trying to, to reassure each other it was actually a good look oh, it was very oh my funny. god and we were in the on the beach sort of freezing cold as well always freezing cold always Peter freezing, yeah. never shot anywhere warm and we never had enough clothes on <gasps> but you sort of loved that look you know yeah, that sort of loved slightly it when your eyes look. were sort of tortured slightly yeah. runny eyes yeah. kind of yeah you're about to cry because you usually were about to cry in fact <laughs> 
So I'm just using a darker shade of brown here just to sculpt out. And I've seen you do this on yourself when you're out and you do it really well, by the way. Mm, um, thank you. And it's just nothing too fussy, just buffing along the natural contours there and then into the socket line, just blending away. And then we use the lighter colour again, just up on the brow bone. And how did you get into modelling in the first place? Gosh, well, you know, uh, people had always told me things like, you know, you should be a model, and I'd never really listened, I suppose. And it got to leaving school, and I still hadn't got a job, and I hadn't got a place in further education. And I think, I think I sort of panicked slightly <laughs> and, and took myself off to Models One in London, which mm. was very fortunate because they really were the best agency. Definitely. Yeah. And walked in like a drowned rat because, of course, it had been pouring with rain that day, didn't have an umbrella, you know, all the yeah. classic things. And Josie Fonseca, who was one of the owners, saw mm -hmm. me. And she said, mm, just stay here, darling. And <laughs> walked off and got a few of the other bookers and went, yes, we've decided we'll take you on for a trial run. And oh, is that um, they said? A trial yes, run? Yes, a trial. Brilliant. And I mean, I, I went to go and see a casting director the next day and I got the job. Oh, so wow. I was actually working within a week. What was the job? Do you remember? Oh, gosh, it was terrible. <laughs> what was it? <laughs> it was some um, awful, awful... Um, commercial for somebody like the Daily Express and I remember having to stand there and throw money <laughs> oh, no. at, I think it was Martin Sheen actually or something <laughs> there must have been some bonanza win of some yeah kind. yeah anyway I because it ran into overtime as all things did in those days mm. you know I, I, I earned proper money oh my god I, yeah I never amazing. I never assumed that you could uh, it could be a living yeah so I very quickly yeah, thought, people didn't really wow, know much about it. No, they know. didn't. So I really thought, well, I could stick at this. This is, this is okay. <laughs> but it was very quick for me. You so know, within I'd, no time you were kind yeah, of... Yeah, I, I didn't have to really plough away at it. You know, for some people, they have to really, really want to do it and have that kind of self-belief. And for me, it was happening so quickly. So I'm just going to use a dark pencil now, really dark brown and just massage into the roots of your lashes. I always like you with a pencil right down into the roots there and then smudged in. Do you know what I want to ask you and I think everyone that's watching this video would be interested to hear what sort of beauty tips do you give to your daughters? What kind of advice do you give them? Having been obviously in the beauty industry and modelling and having people look at your face and kind of stare at you for all these years and you're obviously good at makeup as well what tips do you pass on to your lovely girls well you know i'm i'm lucky okay, yes. actually they're very um they're very open to to all sorts of things but they're so girly and they love makeup they've watched me do it for years they're actually really good at it all of them and you know the things i taught them are the things you know, the obvious things, you know, cleaning your face properly. But mm. I'm obsessed with them not using face wipes. Oh, yeah. They're the oh bane God. of my life yeah, is I hate face wipes. wipes. I just, you know, really being cleansing properly, mm -hmm. you know, soaking mascara off, not yes. rubbing. All of those things that are really important because, you know, you've only got this skin once. and. Yeah. You can't get to my age and you move it like that and it stays there, you know, <laughs> it folds over, it's awful. Well, they've got some great genes from you, so it is really just about preserving what they have as well. See, I really love that, you call it massaging between the eyelashes. <laughs> I haven't, a called, root, I haven't called a root it, massage. A root massage. For your lashes. That's the only makeup trick that I have. And it's a little bit dangerous, but oh, I, I use this, it sounds bad, but I use one of those, um, they're like artists' felt-tip pens, you know, know, those yeah. automatic mm -hmm. liquid liners. Yeah. And I get it so that it's sort of a little bit maybe too wet, and I just dab it, poke it between the lashes so it's not a line. Mm -hmm. And that the reason I do this is 
you know, with old age, you can't you can't draw a line. You can't draw a line on my li- my eyelid, eyelids anymore. Not a really graphic no, liquid. You can't. Yeah, those it, days it, it are looks gone. harsh. It's over. <laughs> it's the end. So to get that kind of depth of colour in there, I do this point, 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 and that's just almost like it's filling out the mm. lashes. Yeah, it's just enriching the, line. the lash line. And then you know, and then you can have put a little powder over it or yeah. a little pencil. But and also, it's that's quick as well. It's the only tip I've got. Stress free. <laughs> no, it's a good one. Well, it takes the stress out of it if you're trying to get this line. Oh yeah, oh, and you I know, can't. technically, it's difficult to do anyway. And if you feel that you know your eye shape isn't really, it isn't great for that. Well, the then thing it's is, if soup- I hold it and, and do that, oh, then, then, then let I let go, go yeah. and it's all over the place. <laughs> It's like taking good tip. to my It's eyes. a good tip, a very good tip. I'll get, I'm getting That's behind that one. Right, I'm going to do your brows. Now, you've always had legendary brows. Your brows have always been incredible. So, I mean, I don't need well, to I do didn't, that I didn't mess much. around with them. You know, yeah, back you in really the day, didn't, did you? You didn't we had any... this moment of bleaching. Okay, I have bleached them a few times, and I will admit that I like it. But the plucking... You know, when they say, oh, they never they never grow back the same again, yes. actually that, that really does happen. Mm-hmm. You have to be really careful. So if you're going to have a slightly thinner moment, just be aware of what you're taking away Yeah. and whether you're ever going to want that back again. <laughs> yeah, and keeping with this, I mean, there's such a good natural shape that frames your face so well. You know, I can't imagine you with really skinny brows. I think it would be a... It would have been a real shame if you'd have been plucking these away back in the day. Yeah, I think that they're, they're really important part of the character of your face. Absolutely. If you've got them, you've got them for a reason. Yeah, they're meant to be there. They're meant to be. So just curling those lashes. It takes me a while. You're good at it, though. <laughs> they're incredibly straight. They are straight, yeah. But I these... love that pencil you've used. Oh, yeah, the Kevin O'Cromwell. It's this nice, rich brown, isn't it? It's gorgeous. I have to show Simon that. Okay, <laughs> he's going to like he's that the one. Master, he's the master of pencils. Is he? Whenever my girls wanted to borrow makeup, they never wanted to borrow my makeup. Oh, they never wanted this. to borrow Simon's. He had much better makeup. <laughs> That's fantastic. Oh my God, I didn't he's know that taught, about he's him. He's taught many, actually, many makeup artists little tricks. I see. Yeah, I mean, he used to have this particular trick of using, because he's got such blue eyes, a really deep, deep kind of aubergine instead of black and he'd always say well it just it brings out the blue of my eyes because <laughs> i always think of I mean, nick who thinks with makeup <laughs> i'm seeing nick tonight actually but i always think like makeup conversations with him but not so much simon but of course they all wore so much makeup oh god they? absolutely they have no problem with it no inhibition whatsoever oh we'll get it's simon on next then quite fabulous he can he's come and do his tricks his makeup <laughs> very good and you know I do think, I mean, it's such a shame. Why should it be just for us? I don't really understand. I agree with you. I mean, it's we if we get a blemish or a spot, we can cover it, but men are supposed to just let it be. But I think, well, why not? Mind you, I did have a bit of a head start ma- marrying a member of Duran Duran. <laughs> yeah, you did, actually. You totally not, it's not did. necessarily au naturel makeup all the time. but <laughs> But yes, but he's got good eye pencils. So lots of mascara now. Nice black mascara. Can you ever have too much mascara? No, you really can't. It's just the best. It's the best invention ever. It is. And, you know, as the day goes on and tonight, you can put more layers on. I know. It's brilliant. If you've only got time to do one thing, it's just so transformational, isn't it? Mm. Absolutely. And of course, my eyelashes are so straight normally that if I curl them and then put mascara on, I feel like a I feel like a different person altogether. So I'm just using some contouring powder just to sculpt out cheeks. And this was obviously in the early '90s. It was all about sculpting and contouring, and it's so back in fashion at the moment. God, it's having a kind this. of yeah. r- renaissance. Yeah, some of us used to go a little too far with it. <laughs> Not mentioning any names. I think I can guess. Yes. <laughs> Could get scary. Now I'm going to use this shade for blush. Because so I think it's nice to... I always think that's that... almost exactly what we used to use. 
back in the day. Yeah, that bourgeois. Yeah, I think um, people think of that kind of era of makeup as just being very sort of monochrome almost in terms of the contouring and the beiges and the browns and the taupes, but there was a nice yeah. little hint of blush. Okay, now for lips, obviously we need the exact right colour. I don't actually have spice lip pencil. Can you believe that? Good old spice. Good old spice. I, I mean, mean we used wow. To, we used to drag that out everywhere. <laughs> On every shoot, there would always be spice. And there was another one, you know, that we used to use. We used to keep really quiet, though. And that was by Arconceal, which was a, another kind of high yeah. street, cheaper French makeup brand called Bamboo. Oh, really? Mm, it has a slightly more dead colour. Wow. Not as, not as rosy. Yeah, because spice, spice has, is quite pinky. So let's put some lip balm on. And with lip shape, we're going to slightly go outside a touch just to give you that pumped up lip. And I know you've got your top lip that you like done just so <laughs> and believe me it's just because i have weird lips lisa it's i just i have weird <laughs> lips everyone has their thing about lips it's brilliant so i'm just gonna do a bit more massaging <laughs> i mean you are such a professional i remember the first job that i ever did with you and we went to kenya mm, gosh yes. lamu <gasps> It was boiling trip. hot. I remember. It was boiling hot. And I remember doing your makeup and thinking, oh my God, this is going to melt off in like two seconds. And then when I went to touch you up, I was like, oh wow, you're not even sweating. And you said to me, no, I have a technique for that. I do this thing where I like shallow breathe and I can stop <laughs> myself from sweating. And I was like, you oh my God, she's amazing. She fell for, she fell for it. She she's fell amazing. For she can stop herself. She can she keep the makeup. Mind you, what you, I was you really doing did was, do that. Well, I was dehydrating myself all day like a fool See, and, and shallow breathing because we had nowhere to go to on that yeah. trip. We were just in huts by the beach. There was no air conditioning, no fans. There was no electricity in no those electricity. huts. No <laughs> electricity. So there was no, oh, just go and stand in the fan for a bit. You know, if yeah, I really allowed myself cool to off. heat up, that was it. So for the actual lipstick, I've, I've brought a few of the original kind of oh Kevin O'Quan. This was these. Ultima to the Nakeds. And these are the original lipsticks. And when you look at them now, these kind of crazy white almost grey beiges and yellowy sort of nudes it's quite funny isn't it they do look quite amazing they're so amazing so colors time, yeah actually and even the packaging i think the packaging is so kind of i mean i'm not sure we ever used so any one thing i think we yeah. just used to mix them up a bit definitely and i think um but we never really used to use lipstick you know we just used so much lip pencil and then you'd get a little bit of concealer or some foundation and you just kind of dab it. Pat, yeah. Pat it. Let's up. do that now. Yeah. Let's just try. And I think the tip with this is just trying some different shades. And if it looks the wrong colour, you just go back in and add one that's slightly darker or one that's slightly lighter. Thank you so much for coming. You know I'll always do your makeup anytime anyway. And also mm -hmm. I want to say thank you to some about something. When I did my first job with you, and that was the first trip I've ever done, and I Got to, we got to the airport, you don't even remember this, they wouldn't let me on the plane. Or something happened when I was trying to check in, like I was too late or something, and I was going back to England, and you were thinking we're going to New York. And um, I was in a panic, and you were like, no, I'm going to sort it all out for you. And you took me to the BA desk, and you were like, you need to sort her out. She needs to get on this plane, help her, I don't remember. abandon her here, don't leave her here. And you were so <laughs> lovely to me, and so I was so scared and not or not experienced with anything and traveling and stuff and you were just so lovely to me and i've never forgotten that so oh bless your I just, heart that's why i would always oh. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> i'd completely forgotten about well, that I ne I remember i've it never now. forgotten yes. it it was so oh, mind i wasn't that experienced myself really <laughs> so you were you were brilliant thank you very much oh wow my pleasure